voltage and electric potential energy. And so we're going to be learning about these two things at the same time because there's some tricky vocabulary that is going to be introduced. So another way that people will describe voltage is electric potential. But electric potential is not the same as electric potential energy. So when I'm teaching or in any of the problems I write for the exam, for example, I will only use voltage. I won't use the term electric potential. Uh, but in your book and in any future time that you're dealing with uh, these concepts, you might see voltage written as electric potential. And it's very important that you don't confuse that with electric potential energy. They are related to each other, but they are totally separate things. So voltage Uh, which we represent with the variable capital V, and it has units capital V, which are volts. And so there are a few different relationships between uh, that voltage is going to have. Uh, with some of the things that we've already learned. So uh, one of the big things is that, so I guess, let me write it in general form. Uh, so you don't need to know this general form, but just so that I can help keep it straight in my head. So voltage is the integral of the electric field over some path length. And for this class, uh, what we'll take that to mean is that the electric field dotted with some distance equals a change in voltage. And so remember, this dot product was a special form of multiplication that takes two vectors in and it produces a scalar quantity on the outside. So you multiply two vectors and the result is a scalar. Uh, what this means is that, I guess I'll show you in a second uh, what that means. Uh, and another way that we can write this is that the electric field is equal to the change in voltage over change in distance. Remember delta X just means final minus x initial.
So if we take a point charge, for example, the electric field for a point charge is K Q over R squared. And if we set that equal to voltage divided by X, which we'll call R, then you see that we get this R to cancel. And what you're left with is that the voltage for a point source is K Q over R. So this is an important formula. And voltage is gonna be very important throughout the rest of this class. Anytime we talk about circuits, uh, we're probably going to be using voltage to describe uh, either the battery or the alternating voltage that's flowing through the circuit. Uh, like when you say something is a 12 volt battery, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about this measurement of voltage. So, uh, so, uh, We'll talk about the dot product part of voltage now. So we said that voltage is, or change in voltage is electric field dot product. Draw the dot in red, just to highlight it. delta x. And so conceptually, what you have to remember, so let's say that we had a uniform electric field that pointed in this direction. What the dot product is telling us is that if we, if our delta x is in this direction, then E dot delta x equals zero. So that means your volt, your change in voltage is zero. And that's because the electric field and distance or displacement are perpendicular. So another way to write this is the magnitude of the electric field times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. So for this example, uh, you can use the concept just that I see that these are at right angles. So I know that there's the dot product is going to go to zero. If you didn't remember that, you could still say, all right, the magnitude of E times the magnitude of delta X times cosine of 90. And then when you plug that into your calculator, you'll see that cosine of 90 degrees is zero. If we do the other example now where this is our electric field in black, still a uniform electric field, 
And now we have our delta x in this direction. Now, E, uh, now the change in voltage is E dot delta X, magnitude of E times the magnitude of delta X times cosine of zero. You plug cosine of zero into your calculator and you just get one. So multiplying by one just leaves you with delta V equals electric field times delta X. So the concept to take away from this is that your voltage will change if you are moving in the same direction or the opposite direction of your electric field, but your voltage will not change if you are moving perpendicular to the electric field. And another concept is that if you want to maximize your change in voltage, then you need to move, then your uh, electric field and your delta x need to be at an angle between each other that's zero. So you could imagine uh, if you had a, an elect, uh, if you rotated what direction you were going, then this blue arrow that I already have drawn would be the maximum change in voltage. And then this red uh, delta x vector that I'm drawing would be the minimum change in voltage. So this is max delta v. And in red is minimum delta V. Uh, so I'll go ahead and introduce it now. The concept of equipotential lines. And so you could just use your kind of reasoning skills. So potential, this means voltage. And equa means equal or same. And so what equipotential lines are, or are just lines that represent equal voltage. And these are analogous to um, topographical lines. So if you guys are familiar with like geography or maps at all, um, topographical maps will show you elevation change and they'll do it with lines. So as you go up a mountain, they'll draw kind of a circle around the mountain that shows uh, which parts of the mountain are all at the same elevation. And so equipotential lines will do a similar thing, but for voltages. So this is analogous to topography for elevation changes. And so we've already seen uh, kind of the start of one example. So if we take a uniform electric field and I'll draw so in black will be the electric field and in red will be the equipotential lines. 
So we know that if I move perpendicularly to the electric field, my voltage stays the same. And therefore, anywhere along these lines would be the same voltage. Now, you can draw however many lines you want, uh, but maybe we say like this line is at a voltage of five volts, here is six volts, here is seven volts. And so you can pick like a separation of one volt or 0.5 volts or however many you want. Um, but the what matters is that the lines that you draw have to be perpendicular to the electric field. So this is for a uniform electric field. And the other kind of electric field that we know how to draw is for a point charge. So for a point charge, let's say it's positive, you get electric field lines that point radially outward. And so uh, the way that these equipotential lines will work are that there'll be circles going around the charge. And so again, maybe this is like one volt, two volts. I guess it would have to be the other way. Right, for a point charge, we said that the voltage goes as one over R, so the farther away you get, the smaller the voltage would be. And so you'll you'll be investigating this in the lab and checking uh, the equipotential lines for various electric fields. Uh, so I'm going to write this as U E or yeah, probably just U E like that. So the U is for potential energy. And the subscript of E denotes that it's for electric like electricity. And then the units are still joules, which were the same units for potential energy as we saw last semester. So uh, we should remember that there was a relationship between force and potential energy. And it's going to look similar to uh, what we just saw of the relationship between electric field and voltage. So, and this is related to the work energy theorem. So that's something else that we saw last semester. So the work energy, energy theorem states that if you take the force dotted with some length and you take the integral of that, 
you get this quantity called work. Now uh, we don't have to do integrals in this class. So instead we simplify this to just be force times our dot product with delta x equals work. And then work is the same thing as potential energy. And so I'll do this in red again, just to remind you that this is a dot product. And so the same concepts apply if the force and the direction that you're moving are in are perpendicular to each other, then you would be doing no work and therefore you would have no change in potential energy. However, if your force and the direction of movement are in the same direction, then you would either be doing work or having work done to you and therefore you would be having a change in potential energy. So relating this to electric force, we have the Coulomb force. which is the force for point charges. And that was K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. And remember force is a vector, so we could write this uh, with an R vector hat, but uh, I'll just keep it simple for now. So if we take force and we multiply it by R, then we would get the change in potential energy. And for right now, I'll just write it as the electric potential energy. So the Coulomb force is K Q1 Q2 over R squared. If we multiply that by R, you'll see that we get one of the R's in the denominator to cancel out. And we're left with the potential energy equaling K Q1 Q2 over R. So this is the potential energy for point charges. And if you wanna draw a parallel to Newtonian gravity. So you remember that we started out with Newtonian gravitational force is G M1 M2 over R squared. And we did the same kind of thing where we relate, if we wanted to know the potential energy due to gravity, we take the force of gravity multiply by R, G M1, M2 over R squared times R. And so the potential energy due to gravity was G M1, M2 over R. And maybe there's a minus sign in here uh, that has to do with calculus reasons, but um, 
that's not important for right now. Um, but what I wanted to show is just the form of these equations is very similar, right? You have some constant for electric force and electric potential energy, that was K. Then you multiply by the two charges and then you divide by the distance between them. And then for potential energy due to gravity, you have some constant, which is capital G. You multiply by two masses and then divide by the distance between them. So uh, the form of the equation is similar and it's just different variables that you put. So now we've seen uh, several equations. So I just wanna uh, kind of collect them all in one place. I guess actually before I do that, let's do one more thing. So uh, last class when we introduced electric fields, we saw that the we could relate force and electric field by just multiplying the electric field times uh, some charge. Or in other words, electric field is force divided by some charge. Uh, we also just saw that force is Uh, or I guess rather potential energy is force times delta x or uh, force equals change in potential energy over change in distance. And I guess if we write it this way, we get rid of the vectors. So what if we take this force and plug it back into here? that would make electric field equal to change in potential energy over delta X times Q. So if we do this for a point charge, The potential energy is K Q one Q two over R. If we divide that by R times Q, let's say Q two. Then what will happen are the Q2s will cancel and these two Rs will multiply each other together and you'll get KQ over R squared. Uh, so this whole equation just simplifies to the electric field equals KQ over R squared. So that's the same as we've seen before. Uh, so all of that was just kind of to show you that the electric potential energy is still consistent with the framework that we've already developed with uh, relating electric field and force. We also saw that the 
voltage is equal to the electric field dot delta x or electric field equals change in voltage over change in position. And so if we take this equation, for the electric field for a point charge. I'll get rid of the, the vector hat since I'm not writing the unit vector. And I replace that with delta V over R. Then you see that this R cancels with one of those R's and you get, oops. You get that delta V equals KQ over R, uh, which is what we saw earlier. So, Electric field or uh, electric potential energy and voltage are not the same thing, uh, but all of these equations are interrelated. Uh, so it can get a little confusing, uh, but for this, I would recommend just uh, committing them to memory. So uh, memorizing the equations for point charge, electric field, voltage, force, and potential energy uh, so that you don't get confused. So I'll write that on the next slide. And on any exams, you'll have, I'll have them all written down for you, but you'll still need to know uh, like the vocabulary. So the problem will say, find the voltage, uh, but the, like, you'll have to know which equation means the voltage. So for point charge, The force is this, the electric field is this, and so these are both vectors, so that's why I drew this unit, or wrote, wrote down this unit vector. The Voltage is this, and then the electric potential energy is this. So you see there's four different equations and they all look fairly similar. Uh, it's just that some of them have two charges and the radius squared on the bottom, and some of them only have one charge, and then some of them have just a single radius instead of a radius squared on the bottom. Uh, so they all kind of look the same, and it'll be your job to remember which equation goes with which term, force, electric field, voltage, or potential energy. Uh, 